To insert a dimension line, I have to go to the Annotate tab, Dimensions panel, and choose one of these types. I'm going to start with the option Align. Now, if you look at the options bar, we have by default the pick option set as entire wall. This means we can click on a wall and place a dimension line of its entire length. So, it's simple. And remember that after, I can still readjust the position by moving the grips to different references. Now, sometimes it suits me better to add a dimension line by choosing two points instead. And for that, I'm going to switch this tab to Individual References. With this, I can add a dimension line from this side of this wall up to the other extremity. Then click again on the position that I want the new dimension to be located. Let's measure now the horizontal line. And if I don't press escape to exit the command, I keep adding dimensions as long as I want. Now I want to start from the left side, but you can notice it's highlighting the center of the wall. The reason for this is that I have the reference lines set to detect the wall center lines instead of the wall face which is exactly what I'm going to switch to. Now it's working as I want. To finish, let's put also a dimension to measure this vertical wall. Editing dimension lines. One important thing, it's not possible to change the length of the dimension by just double clicking on it. Instead, it opens this window where I can edit some options. Here, I can replace the actual value with the text or add prefixes, suffixes or text above and below. For example, I can choose to replace the value with the text. Type for example wall1 and then click on OK to save the changes. But have in mind, if I want to cheat or just change the actual value to an approximate number, the program doesn't let me to do it. It says that I cannot replace a value with a different value. Basically, to modify the length of this wall, I have to select the wall first and then click on the dimensions in the same way that I do for the temporary ones. Notice also that when the dimension is editable, the color changes to blue. But not always is possible to change the length of a wall by simply changing the length of the permanent dimension line. If you look at the horizontal wall above, it's intersected with a wall at the left and another wall at the right corner. Suppose I want to increase the length to 8 meters, would it extend to the right or to the left? For this reason, the dimension is not editable right now. Yet here, without a wall at the right, I select the wall, and now yes, I'm able to change the length to 8 meters. As you can see, it extends to the right, because there is no wall there. Now let's see some tips, tricks and additional options. Entire walls, auto-dimensioning options. Have a look at this floor plan. I'm going to insert another Align Dimension, but this time I will pick an entire wall. As you remember, if I select this wall, I can add a dimension of its total length. Now, at the Options bar, there is a button called Options. Click there. Auto Dimension Options. Basically, I'm able to create dimension segments in an entire wall, and this is a very useful feature you are going to understand. I tick on intersecting walls and you will see what's going to happen. Click OK, select the wall and I automatically create segments when walls are intersecting. So this is very nice. I can avoid adding dimension lines manually with this, which could take a long time for large building, for example a hospital or a hotel. Now if I want to do the same for the wall above, just click there right away and when I finish adding dimensions, press escape. Don't press enter because it doesn't work. Another option is opening. In this case, I add segments in order to measure the distances regarding walls or doors or eventually a different kind of opening. I can choose from centers or widths. 
First, I'll show you the option centers. Choose this wall that has several openings and you can see that here I measure between the center of each door or window. If instead I choose widths, I add a dimension line with segments measuring the widths of each door and window and the distance between them. Now, suppose in this dimension line I want to delete one of these segments. Maybe one or two of these are not necessary in my drawing. If I try to select just a part, it doesn't work by just clicking on it. You can see that I select the full dimension line. However, there is an easy way to do this. Do you remember that we can use the button tap of the keyboard to switch between overlapping objects? That also works here. I press tab when hovering the segment and now that it turned blue, I can click to select just this dimension and then press delete to get rid of it. Now they are two different elements. You can see that I have to select one at a time. In the next example, I'm going to create a dimension line, but this time using individual references. I pick these two reference lines. Then, to place just this dimension, I just click anywhere out of an individual reference. That's what I showed to you before. But let's repeat this. I pick the same lines, and then if I choose another reference, it adds a continuous dimension here. And of course, I can keep doing this process until I'm happy with the result. As you can see, this is also a quick way to have several dimension segments. And one big advantage here, when comparing to auto-dimensioning, is that I can choose the references by myself. Another important thing. Suppose I made a mistake in the selection. I don't need to worry about that because I can always click on a witness line, witnesses lines are these dimension extension lines, to remove it. Witness lines. I can add or remove witness lines after a dimension is placed on the screen. For that, I have to select the object and on the ribbon there is an option here, edit witness lines. Click there, and I can add a new witness line by just picking a new reference, for example the side of this door. Also, I can choose a reference inside the segment, and it will split it. Or even remove a witness line if I click on an existing one. At the end, click on an empty place to confirm the changes. Ah, and don't press escape, because it will cancel what you were doing. Constraints. When I select a dimension line, you can see these locks on each segment. At this moment, all of them are opened, meaning that these dimensions may change if I change the position of the windows or move the walls instead. Let's click on this lock. What I did was constraining the distance from the limit of the external wall and the window. Now it has a fixed value of 1.11 meters. I select this wall. You can see the indication of the constraint here down. And if I move the wall towards the right, the elements of the wall below move in order to keep this distance of 1.11 meters unchangeable. Let's set just a specific distance between the wall where my stairs are attached and the external one instead of a random distance, for example 5. Another option in dimensioning in Revit is the dimension equality. Have a look at the wall on the right. First, I'm going to add an extra window here. I can go to the Modify tab, click on Copy, select the window, press Enter, pick this endpoint and place a new window here. Then I'm going to add a new dimension. Choose entire walls and on the options I'm going to specify centers and remove the tick from intersecting walls. Click on OK.
then I add an align dimension to this wall. And now you can notice this EQ with a red slash on it. It's not very easy to see because it's quite small. If I hover it, it says toggle dimension equality. Basically, if I click there, the windows are automatically moved in order to have the same value in these three dimensions. And even if I increase the wall, the equality always keeps. Ok, there is a question you can ask yourself. If the EQ symbol is displayed, how can we know the length of these dimensions? If you click on the dimension, then click with the right button, you can see a tick here on EQ display. If you uncheck it, the values are displayed now, however they are still in equality constraint mode. We know that because the EQ symbol is there without the cross on it. But how can we remove a dimension equality? The answer is, select the dimension and click on the EQ to remove the constraint. It's just simple as that. But what I think usually happens is people tending to select the dimension and delete it right away. Then we get this warning message. Basically we are removing the dimension but the elements are still constrained. This way also works but Make sure you press on unconstrained here. More dimension styles. Linear dimensions. These are similar to align dimensions, even a bit less versatile. The way they work. I must click in two points to place the dimension. For example, I'm going to click on this corner. Ah, and there is actually a blue point appearing on the screen, even it's very hard to see sometimes. Then I'm going to select the point where this window starts as the second point and finally place the dimension. But look what happens when I choose the same first point and then try to click along this line, a place that isn't a corner end point or intersecting point. I cannot place the dimension, as you can see. So in the dimension that I have created, the points were located in the same x-axis they were horizontally aligned. Now let's see a different situation. I'm going to choose the first point as the end of this wall face and look when the point is not easily understandable Revit displays a bigger point. The second point I choose it a bit up so they are not either vertically or horizontally aligned. And finally I can add a horizontal dimension or if I move all the way out I can now display the vertical distance between the points. Angular dimension. With this type I can measure angles. Look at this example where there is a diagonal wall. I'm going to put an angle dimension there. I click on angular. My selection mode is set to prefer wall faces. I choose this face, then this vertical one, then I just click on the position that I want to place it. After I can keep adding more angles as I wish. Radial dimension. This time I'm going to draw a circular wall. I choose circle in the draw panel. Just make a random wall. Then go to annotate. Click on radial dimension. Then click on this face to put the radius there. The diameter dimension is very similar. It just has a double arrow indicating the diameter. And it's easy to differentiate from the radius dimension. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, Cadim Black, if you aren't a subscriber yet. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.